Welcome to Buy, Hold, Sell. My name's Matthew Kidman and today we're talking about the beaten up telecom sector. More bombs have gone off in that sector than in Darwin in 1942. It used to be a glamour sector, but more recently, extra competition, the MBN, uh, mobile competition have all come home to roost and the stocks have suffered. Joining me today to talk about the telco sector, Ben Clark from TMS and Roger Montgomery from the Montgomery Fund. Roger, I'll start with you. Okay, Matt, just give us Quick summary of why the telco sector has been under so much pressure, do you think? Well, I think that there's, a, there's a structural issue with the sector, and that is everyone's demanding more data. Uh, everyone, all of the suppliers, are, it's incumbent on them to deliver more, but to do it at lower prices. Yep. Uh, there's, it, there's over 110 providers uh, of services on the NBN, and that just means competition's fierce. Uh, people can go elsewhere if prices uh, are, are too expensive, uh, and you've got to deliver more for less. Ben, the MBN's been a real revelation, isn't it? It's yeah. all contestable. Yes. If you don't decide who you're going to take, they switch you off. Yes. What does that mean with these 110 providers? Do, do, does everyone survive? I, I, I still think in the end picture that the, the dominant players will have the dominant customer positions because the way that they're transitioning their customers is pretty smart. Um, and the big question, I think, is the things like the, what are the margins that these guys are earning once they transition their customers are on? And one, I think, area of uncertainty from the market is we still don't know what the ISPs are going to be charged by MBN Co. There's a lot of uncertainty about this CVC, mm -hmm. different data usages and where the government's going to end up. So there's a lot of more question marks than answers at the moment, which is why I think the sector's totally out of favour. Well, it's quite ironic. We had all that consolidation. Everyone was yeah. buying everyone else. And when you got less players, more pricing power. It's yeah. worked the other way. Yeah. Vocus down 70%, uh, TPG down 50%, Telstra down 20%. Can we talk about the stocks? Where would you be positioning on the long side if you had to be in the sector? Um, I'd probably go with TPG. And I think Telstra, to me, has got the most still to lose from where things are. Um, they're going to have to either accept lower margins across the board or lose a lot more customers. TPG, I think have made a difficult decision to move into mobile to bundle and to try and offer a more attractive package to customers. And that's going to take time to see how profitable that looks and money. Um, Focus, I think, is suffering a lot of integration issues, but the actual MBN case behind it looks pretty good. You know, they've managed to grow market share and margins are stable. OK, Roger, let's focus on the big behemoth. Telstra, sure. biggest market share under yeah, pressure. Well, what do you think about Telstra here? It's fallen a long way. Well, the complaint Every submission that any participant in the industry has ever made has complained about um, the universal service obligation subsidisation that Telstra receives, which basically entrenches its market dominance. Mm -hmm. Yet you don't see any evidence of monopoly pricing power. No. So it's a massive problem. So you've got this a giant monopoly-like company, but it hasn't been able to grow its profits one cent for 17 years. Mm. And I don't think that's going to change any time soon. Um, the fact that they're also going to have a, a huge revenue hole as they move uh, as they um, turn off the copper network, uh, and they're going to there's, their customer base is going to be fragmented. Having said that, though, they've got the best mobile network, mm -hmm. and they're still commanding a premium price. But even that's being eroded now by new players. With of course uh, TPG saying they're going to roll out the fourth mobile network. I think. You need the dust to settle before you work out what the economics of these businesses are going to be. Um, they've digested a lot of acquisitions. I don't expect that they've integrated them properly, and Vocus is an ex example of that. Uh, you really are going to have to wait a long time to know what the profitability of these businesses will be. Okay. Roger's saying just sit still for the moment and watch. Yeah. Ben, the sector, would you be looking, given the prices have come down so much, to yeah. reinvest and go long? I, I would, I would, Matthew, because I think the market's gone from pricing the stocks for perfection to a lot of this uncertainty and bad news we're talking about is priced in. You know, Vocus, even on its downgraded numbers, is now trading on under 10 times earnings. And I think it's about seven. Seven. And, and there was the feeling to me that they've washed out any bad news that they could find in that business, and they're probably coming off a low earnings base in the short term. Um, so I, I think it is an area to have a look at because you can make good money when sectors are totally out of favour. And the other thing is ultimately these business, they, businesses do own some very good assets. They're not um, totally capital-like businesses um, and there is some strategic value there as well. Yeah, I think in Vocus's case, you know, they do have, they've got a great network asset. Um, there's no doubt about that. My big concern is that the, the, the business really is directionless at the moment or rudderless. It doesn't have a qualified management team. Um, you know, I'm really worried that Jeff Horth actually can't 
can't do what needs to be done to get that business turned around. And I just know running businesses myself mm. uh, that it takes a long time. Everything's you know, longer and than you think. It, correct. And the market might be, might, yeah, while the market is low at the moment, yeah. uh, it, 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 if it rallies from here, it's probably way too early. Well, the phone seems to be ringing, but it mightn't quite be the time to pick it up yet.